This is what? This is what? Our second, if not third time, doing this type of rant the past two weeks on this show. You're five and six. You're five and six in your first 11 games against absolute dog shit teams. I hate that I have to do this right now. I absolutely hate it. But I hear fans. They complain when I do not go live after this team loses. And again, a lot of the times I do that, I tend to be out. And a lot of times I still try to rush and make sure I'm home in time to cover the game because I've been watching it. But no, I've been home today. I watched this entire damn ball game and I'm losing it. And I know that I'm going to go overboard. I would like everyone to know now here in the live show. My apologies in advance if, one, you get offended in any way by how I speak about this team. Guys, I'm the most optimistic fan that you will find out there. If you've been watching the channel, then you know that damn well. The Mets go on a wing streak, then I'm going to be like, huzzah, finally. Finally, the Mets are gaining in a groove. But no, you go and dominate. You score 20 effing runs in the final two games of the series against the Marlins. And you do jack shit. Oh, Lindor gets a bomb in the ninth. Oh, Alonzo gets a bomb in the ninth. It means nothing. Jacob DeGrom, even without his best stuff, still gets 10 Ks. And this offense does not give a flying fuck. I'm sorry. They are pathetic. This is not good whatsoever. I am beyond flustered with how inconsistent this team. Why do you need to be so Jekyll and Hyde, huh? Why do you have to be like this? They play so down a lesser competition. It's driving me insane. The Braves can't beat teams above 500. And the Mets can't beat teams below 500. How does this make sense? Guys, we have so much to get into on this f***ing game. I got the notes. You know the drill. I apologize. Again, I hate to do this for all Cubs fans in here. Enjoy this W. You deserve it. Again, the Cubs are playing spoiler just like any other team. David Ross has nothing to lose when you're on pace for 90-plus losses this year, right? And the Mets have everything to lose in the first place, and they act like they literally do not care every other night. It feels that way. Or for this case, the homestand to start off every single night through the first two. There is no way to justify how this team is playing. None, nada. You had the pitching. The pitching kept you in this ball game. Jake gives up three earned runs because, again, a lot of things did not go the Mets away. There was a lot of fluky things that happened this game. It does not matter. It does not matter how fluky effing this game was when you score one run. It doesn't matter. 1200 thank you so much for the $20 donation. I appreciate that. Super pathetic effort by the Mets. How they lose to the bomb feeders so easily. So much for the easy part of the schedule. They'll make the playoffs, but if they might not stay long. Zapucky would have no hit. These full, <laughs> always with the Zapucky jokes. Long time no see. Happy to have you in here, guys. And, got, and again, I cannot emphasize this enough, guys. I do not like having to act like this. And this is not me feeling that I have to act like this. I've been on edge since Hap hit that solo bomb. Just because in the back of my mind, I had a terrible feeling about this offense today. They did not give me a good vibe from the jump. Things did not go their way. And again, for the opportunities that they have, they didn't execute. When you get what? Like four, four hits today against Samson and the Cubs? I'm supposed to be confident about this team right now? Again, you go on a winning streak. I'm going to be so happy and laughing my ass off to look back at a show like this, knowing that it did not mean anything out of the end because the Mets got themselves in the group. No, I'm not right off this team. No, the sky's not falling. And hey, we'll see what happens. The Braves are on a three-game losing streak. I doubt they'll lose four because they never lost four all year, long, all year long. But we'll see what happens in San Francisco. The Mets will stay in first regardless on the Braves' performance tonight. But that's not the point. You have a 16-game stretch, 16 straight games against dog shit teams, and you're telling me you go 5-6 and six through the first 11? At this juncture, I will be genuinely surprised if the Mets can come out of this thing a couple games above 500 just because of how they're performing. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm just so fed up. I'm so fed up. I hate that I, again, so pumped. The Mets did so well after dropping game one in Miami. So good. Offense was there. Where are you? Where are you? Pete, I love you, Pete, but I don't give a flying fuck about you hitting that 440-foot bomb in the ninth. That gives you confidence over the next couple days. And finally, it's not like you haven't, you haven't had it for like a month and a half now. And I love you to death, Alonzo. 
You are the heart of this Mets offense. There's no one that I want to succeed more on a consistent level than you. Because I know that when you're riding high, so does this Mets team. And so do they get consistent runs. But Pete, and this goes to the entire the team, Vogelback, Lindor right now, Nemo. I mean, everyone. Tonight was pathetic. It was, again, it was a typical Jacob deGrom LL Mets performance from recent years. Jake got 11 runs, backed him in Pittsburgh. So it's not like that's been a consistent thing this season where the Mets haven't given Jake runs. But it's the fucking Cubs. It's the Cubs. What are you doing? JV, thank you for the dono. Let's talk about Gummy Bear's useless moonshot. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's... Be before I deep dive this game, I need I need to let a little bit more out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And again, I'm sorry. If DeGrom leaves, this would be the highlight. Use Vientos lefty right. There has to be someone on earth who can sit and hit for goddamn check. Okay, let's, I got to let a little bit more out and then we'll get into it. I know that we're getting thumbs down in the chat. If you want to give me thumbs down, that's fine. Maybe it's your first time being here again. I've covered this team almost on an every night basis this entire season. Far more often than not, I'm, I'm raving. I'm so pumped up about this club. You guys know that if you watch the show. Again, if you're new, thank you so much for being here. I know this is not a great first impression, and I do apologize for that. I don't want this to be the first time that you watch the show, even though that will be the case for some of you guys. Fanag, thank you so much for the $5 donation. I've never seen you this mad in a long time. Oh, my God, but it's just fine. That's what I mean. This is, like, unprecedented with me. I do not get like this often. You will see me. The fact that I've been this juiced up multiple times the past two weeks just shows you how inconsistent this offense has been and it's not just going on the past two weeks it's been like this for easily over a month and what amplifies it more is not the fact that you have first even though that's by a sliver right now it's that you're not taking advantage of finally having a favorable schedule you stayed afloat with all the hard months this year and you're telling me you drop a series to the nationals and the cubs what are you doing Mets? get your head out of your ass There's no, there's no one that's more upset with feeling the way right now than I am. I'm sure you guys can relate in the show right now. Let's break down this atrocious, god-awful piece of shit that was called a ball game. And again, uh, my apologies for the profanity, especially for the younger viewers. I don't, I really do not mean to act like this. But instead of me just not doing the show, screaming at my wall, because I got no one to talk to right now other than Twitter, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, let's just do it for the show. Let's just do it for the show. I don't want to be viewed as that person that is the optimist to the point where it hurts themselves where i'm not going to be that fair weather fan that comes out and say oh you know the mets lost night but no biggie no it is a biggie because this has been a trickle down effect that this mets team has been doing for the past two weeks and over the past month and a half they have not been playing consistent baseball and they only have themselves to blame especially when you have this type of schedule there is no way to justify being this inconsistent there is none you are not facing studies is on the opposing side. Give credit or credits to Samson. His stuff isn't pretty. It's literally nothing. It is nothing. Assad had some nice stuff. Definitely better than Samson, in my opinion. Had more cut. Loved his cutter. I was working the sinker yesterday. But, like, the Mets just had lazy, lackadaisical at-bats night. They literally looked like a team that had no fine fucks. What's, they did not care whatsoever. They had no interest in winning this ballgame. Yes, of course, that isn't their mindset, but it's they're pressing so hard. They're swinging at first pitches right down the dick, left and right, and they're grounding into double plays or normal ground outs. Lazy at bats. Lazy at bats when you're not allowed. You're not supposed to be having them. You have runners on the corners, Pete, and you grab first pitch swing. How many times a season, Pete, has first pitch swinging benefited you? Jeff McNeil, I love you, Jeff. Why are you first pitch swinging down the stretch when you know you need runs? You're supposed to be grinding out at bats. This entire team was absolutely putrid tonight. And I and I pray, there's nothing more than I want. I pray that when I talk to you guys tomorrow in post game show, assuming we do it because I have to record my podcast tomorrow night, two more than likely we'll see to be determined. Assuming we do post game show tomorrow, I pray that I finally have some positives for you guys. But even if the Mets win tomorrow and blow the doors off the Cubs, I'll be happy. But uh, it's not going to be anything. It, I doubt it'll be anything drastic. Because again, 
they they pissed away the Marlins in games two and three. And they look like a shell of that team. That was just, what, 48 hours ago. Dominating a team with better pitching. Let's talk about this game. We're 10 minutes in. I got to talk about this game as much as I hate to see it. And and once more, guys, thank you all so much for chatting. And make sure to smash that like and subscribe. And as always, Douglas, thank you so much for the membership, brother. I appreciate you. I don't know how I'm getting members out, out of screaming my ass off. But uh, hey, you know, same way that Mets fans unite when things are going great. The same way Mets fans unite when things are not going great. We all feel these same emotions together. And again, I don't know how many times I need to say this to people, especially if this is your first time here. I am not this type of fan. I hate feeling and acting like this type of fan. I despise the fans that have been tweeting at me every single day since the start of the fucking season as if this team will not go far or have a great season. The Mets are having one of the best seasons in the entirety of the franchise's existence. I am not a fan that will ever write off this team. I will ride or die with them no matter what. But because I'm that passionate, because I follow pitch by pitch every single night, unlike you fair weather schmucks out there, you know who you are. You just focus on the negatives for the LL Mets. Why? Because you're a bunch of Frank Flemings out there. I don't know what else to tell you. I am not that type of fan. But when I know that this team is drastically underperforming, I'm always going to call them out on their bullshit. This is crunch time. You're going for the division lead. You're trying to win this division. And you're gaining zero ground when you've had everything on the effing platter handed to you by the by the schedule. And you do nothing with it. We're 11 games in. You got five games left until you play the Brewers. And the Brewers are nothing either. You should absolutely pistol whip them too. At minimum, one, two, or three. But who knows? The Mets, the beauty of this team is that they step up when they're facing bigger competition. We've seen that. They've done it all year long. And that's big. That's important come playoff time. But what's not big is you not knowing how to competently at least half step up when you're facing absolutely putrid opponents. You're so Jekyll and Hyde, babe. What? Just be cut. Finally. Finally. You can kind of see. You, I, I'm saying this wrong. The Mets are kicking back. They're relaxing. They have their legs up. When they have their easy schedule, the final month of the year. And normally, <coughs> normally, if the Mets had a 10 games up right now in the division, it wouldn't mean much. It's okay. The Dodgers, again, have been a little up and nothing crazy. But point I'm trying to make <coughs> is that if the Mets were not in the division race, uh, race that there are right that I can't even speak. Hold on. If the Mets were not in the division race that they're currently in, this would not be nearly as worrisome or bothersome. Yes, you want momentum entering playoffs, and that's something that concerns me the most right now because if they stay around 500 entering playoffs, that's a big no-no. You want momentum when you enter playoffs. Some of the best teams year after year go on a run, even when they're not necessarily the best team in the league because they're red hot into the postseason. The Mets are the opposite of that right now. They might be red hot for 24 hours, then they're ice cold for another 24, if not 48. They need to be better. And when you have the Braves that somehow, someway drop three games in a row and you're only 1.5 games up if they lose again tonight for their season high four straight losses. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't make it feel any better. It really yesterday a little bit, but not today. No. Pathetic. You cannot be dropping series to these absolutely horrendous teams. And yet you're doing it left and right, left and right. The Mets are two and two in their first four series against these sub subpar teams to start September, late August into September. Let me get you a donation and quick then we'll break down the game. I'm sorry. I know, I know. I should have been breaking down the game already. <clears throat> And look, I wouldn't mind having to feel this way nearly as much if it wasn't, if it was, say, once a month. But this is at minimum the third time I've had to do this shit in the past two weeks. Why? James, $5 donation. My lady left in the ninth inning because she knew I would be a tomato face too. I get being a fan. I still believe, I still, look, I, I believe this team 1,000%. Do not get it twisted. I will be with this team until the very end. I'm going to the Mets' first playoff game this year. I'm ready. I'm excited. I feel you 100%, James. Thank you for the donut. It's not about being with this team or not. It's the fact that we're literally witnessing them not knowing how to clutch up down the stretch when it's the most vital time to do so. The ramifications of not being in first by the end of the year are actually greater than you'd initially think, given the playoff format. If the Mets go in the wild card, again, it's not to say that they can't go on a deep run. 
but you face the Phillies presumably first round. Then you have to get through the effing Dodgers before you even consider getting to the NLCS. If the Mets stay in first, they get that bye through the first week. And then they face the winner of the Padres at, or the uh, Padres Cardinals matchup as of now. If I'm a Mets fan, I want that break and I want to face the Padres or Cardinals. I don't want to have to consider as much as the Mets have been doing great all year long against the Phillies. I don't want to have to consider that short matchup against them. And then you have the Dodgers before you're even in the NLCS. No one wants that. You want to win this division. You've had it on lock all year long. And they're, they, they, just, they just are deciding to only wake up when they want to. And that is not going to cut it for a team that is in this tight of a division race. <sighs> Power with a $5 donation. Warriors, here's some trivia. What does 2007, 2008, 20 Mets have in common? Pat, miss me with that bullshit. The Mets are not collapsing. This is not a collapse. The Mets literally have one more loss in the second half as of now than the Braves. It's not a collapse. The only difference is that the Mets have been in first all year long and they've had the hottest team in baseball trailing them all year long. That's the only reason why it amplifies things. The Mets would be upwards of 10 up in every other division in baseball right now. It's They are not collapsing. This is not a narrative game. That's complete bullshit. The issue is that they're not playing well when they're supposed to play well. You can justify a five and six stretch more if we're going back to June when you have the Dodgers, you have the Padres, and you have even the Giants when they were better earlier in the year. You can't justify this shit when you played the Nationals, the Pirates, the Marlins, the Cubs. All right, guys, let's get into the game now, and then I'll then I'll yell some more. The game started off Jacob DeGrom, one, two, three inning. Jake, again, didn't even have his best stuff, yet managed to get 10 punchies. And was the only star of tonight. <clears throat> in the bottom of the first, after Jake got two punch, <clears throat> two punches and one, two, three inning, Nimmo would walk, Lador would fly, uh, fly out. McNeil reaches on after hitting Nimmo the second time this year. The Mets hit a runner running the base pass. First time was I believe Robinson Cano in uh, in Arizona when both the Mets and the Diamondbacks managed to do that in one game. Alonso would walk. Missed the home run by a hair. You saw him yapping with Samson. Samson trying to walk to Pete after Pete threw his bat with the walk as if Samson could do shit to Pete Alonso. Pete's never this pissed off. And he's been pressing lately too. So yeah, go poke the bear. I fucking dare you. Um, Bogey grounds out to end the inning. So already for another game, and the third or fourth game over this past couple game stretch, the Mets have multiple runners on, do not score. And what happens? What happens, might you ask, might, might you ask when the Mets leave a couple strand, if not bases loaded strand? It wasn't the case tonight, two on this time in the first. Well, the Mets give up the first run again to the Cubs. Ian Happ hits a solo bomb, barrels a bad boy. Jake cover the plate too much. Ortega with an infield single. Gomes reaches on the fielder's choice. Wisdom with a strikeout. That's always known for. Rivas with a K. Ends the inning. Another couple um, couple punchies. Again, Jake had a couple punchies every single inning in this game. That's why he has 10 through 6. So Ian Happ gets the one nothing lead for the Cubs here. And the first thing in my mind is, I said on Twitter, I want, to, I want to punch a wall. I really did. Just because the Mets have proven quickly. And I've said this. If you guys have been following the channel, you know. They've proven for quite a while now. This entire second half of the season at minimum. When the Mets score a run within the first three innings of a game, they're in almost locked to win a ball game. But when they do not score a run in the first three innings of a ball game, they're almost a sure lock to lose a ball game because they just don't know how to hit constantly down the stretch in the game when you already are losing by a run or more. That's been the story for them for a while, and it held true here. I absolutely love the passion. This is why I support this channel. Don't ever change. Thank you so much for the donut, Michael White. Great member. Love you. That, bl that blown kiss goes to you. So, Point I'm trying to make is that much wisdom. We're out at home and Alonzo cannot get the tag in time and the run scores. So just like that, it's a three, nothing ball game in the fourth Mets would get out of it. Then we get to the fifth after the Mets don't score in the fourth. Huh? I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm surprised by that one. And again, I appreciate everyone being in here, guys. I'm going to go back to ranting a little bit shortly. Um, did I freeze?
Do you guys hear me? Hello? Hello? What happened? Hello? You guys see me? What just happened? What just happened? Uh, guys, I don't know what I did. I was going to say, did I really get flagged? I haven't said anything outlandish that I haven't said on the channel before. What ha Guys, what was the last thing that I was saying that you heard? Can you guys tell me what, I, uh, what, what was the last thing I said that you guys heard? So I can fix this and go back. Again, my stream ju is going just as well as the Mets tonight, if you couldn't tell. That's how much I am like this team. I ride or die with this club. What was the last thing that I was saying, guys? Do you remember? Please, please tell me. Stream couldn't handle the rant. I agree. Guys, what was the last thing I was saying? Can someone please tell me? Do any of you guys remember the last thing I was saying? Fourth inning? I was in the fourth inning. Was I in the fourth inning? Okay, let's get back to the fourth inning. My apologies, guys. So it cut off right as I was about to break down, right as I was breaking down what happened wrong in the fourth inning. So let's let's get to it again. Hold on, let me make sure I didn't miss any donations quick. I don't believe I did. Okay, all right, let's get back to the fourth. I apologize for freezing, guys. Again, the, the stream couldn't handle the rant, nor could the Mets handling having a Compton offense tonight. Again, newsflash, they didn't have it. Okay, going back to the fourth. Reyes with a Napo single. Hap with a single. Ortega leaves the game again while he was trying to bunt. Again, I hope Ortega's okay, but he's he's an idiot for that one. He had his grip terribly wrong on the barrel. And it hit his hand completely because he wasn't gripping the barrel right. Shouldn't have grip. You have to have your... Again, use flash MLB, MLB hitters. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. But when you bunt on a 100-mile-per-hour fastball, if you have the balls, do that to begin with. You want to put your hand placement... Get ready for this. Behind the barrel behind the barrel it's almost like you don't want your hand to show again call me crazy i know i'm no expert but i, I i'm pretty sure i got that one down so ortega leaves the game after getting drilled on the hand um mark i know it does suck while i'm sick sucks when we're all upset thank you so much for the donut though love you brother um noah he gets down the hand pretty hard he exits the game hermosa comes in and he does the unthinkable he actually does a bunt on an 0-2 count right away after again they try to do the exact same thing and it, it succeeds and it sh he should have been out. He was out of the baseline. He was in the way of McCann throwing it first. He was way too far in on the line. It hits Ramos's head. I'm I know I'm not saying his name right. I don't care. Again, I'm not going to give it the light day. So runners are on. Bases juice, no outs. After McCann hits him in the head, should been should it, not a reversible call, not a challengeable call either. Thank you, MLB. Again, God forbid that you're fishing and gets something done right. I know, I know, I know. It's far fetched. Gomes with an RBI sack fly. Wisdom. With an RBI squeeze bunt, Pete Alonzo. Pete, you had one job, Pete. You're a couple feet away at McCann. All the time in the world, you make the throw, even with the guy bolting down from third, and you throw behind McCann, who is Ron's side, to make the tag. McCann can't turn in time. The run scores. And just like that, the Cubs are already up by a total of three to nothing in the fourth inning. So, again, I don't insult to injury. Everything went wrong for the Mets early in this game, but they had no offense to show for it, and that's why I'm not going to give them sympathy. The Cubs kept hitting. The Mets didn't. The Cubs were very Mets-esque tonight, and you got to give them credit. David Ross has nothing to lose, as I mentioned earlier. Was getting guys to do squeezes out of nowhere with the bunts. They worked out, and they favor the Cubs in this one. And if the Mets had Sterling Marte right now, who knows? Maybe things would be different because, again, he's a guy that helps out with that speed on the base pass and doing those bunts, doing those little things for sure. And it's going to be amazing when Marte does come back because clearly this Mets team needs him. Okay. So we get to the fifth because the Mets don't score in the bottom of the fourth. Of course they don't. We get to the fifth. Jacob DeGrom with a one, two, three inning, a couple strikeouts again. Mets don't do anything one, two, three inning for themselves in the fifth, or, or they just don't score. In the sixth, guess what? Jacob DeGrom's final inning, one, two, three with a couple strikeouts. Final line for Jacob DeGrom, six innings, four hits, three in runs, zero walks, 10 strikeouts, 96 pitches. I love you, Jacob, with all my heart, and I'm so sad that the Mets could not be competent for you tonight. Same way that they have been content for you for more, more starts than should have been by far in your career with the Mets thus far. We get to the bottom of the six. Lindor with a walk. McNeil with a double play. And the Mets don't do anything after that. In the seventh, Lugo comes in and he gives up a home run to Bodie. 
who somehow someway gets a ball to carry, unlike how the Mets were able to get a ball to carry until Pete Alonso just barreled a ridiculous one the ninth. Before we get there, though, Nimmo thought he had it, and it just kept it just kept going and going and going. It felt like that was a juice ball with the way that Nimmo read it. And it is then a 4-0 ball game favoring the Cubs. We get to the 8th after the Mets do nothing in the 7th. Uh, Adovino wins. Suzuki with a single. He gets a second base thanks to a wild pitch and then steals third base. But even with him at third, with no outs, Adam Adovino manages to get out of the jam. He gets a strikeout, only gives up that one run, a one hit, no earned runs, 2.03 ear rate on the year for Adovino, 2.01 for Jake, and 3.34 for Lugo, who's now given up home runs in back-to-back -back outings, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm pretty sure he gave up one against the Marlins. We get then, guys, to the ninth. Edwin Diaz comes in, gets in a little bit of jam. Edwin's only had two outs in the past 11 days because the Mets haven't used him. Because the Mets have either had blowout wins or blowout losses, and they haven't been able to use him well. Diaz gives up a couple base knocks, but gets out of the inning unscathed with three strikeouts total. Edwin, even without his best stuff, still got the job done in the bomb of the ninth. Alonzo with a solo bomb, his biggest bomb of the year. Whoop the effing do. I, I, if this is a momentum, if this is a confidence builder for you, Pete, then I will care about it. But until we see that tomorrow in the coming days, I can care less. I truly can care less until proven otherwise. With that bomb, Vientos flies out to deep center in his first at bat tonight. I'm glad that Buck finally decided to pinch it, Vientos. Um, I can understand pinching pinching Vientos more looking back in hindsight tonight than yesterday in the two out spot with bases loaded because that's a lot of pressure on the kid. I get it, but I still would have liked to see him there because Ruff's been an automatic out. He's been rough, no pun intended, even though that there most certainly was a pun intended. Uh, Vientos again, solid at bat, 103 exit velo, dead center, just could not get enough in that bad boy to get himself a bomb. Canna with a walk, and then Eduardo Escobar snaps 10 game hang streak and ends the inning. So, guys. I got to ran a little bit longer, but before I do, McGill today, Tyler McGill, who I love so much, Big Drip McGill, he's expected to be back with the Mets as soon as this weekend. However, he may need one more outing because after McGill has retired 12 straight batters, all the batters he's faced in double-A and triple-A in rehab today, there was an hour delay. There was around, there was there an hour, there was a, yeah, there was an hour delay in triple-A Syracuse tonight. So McGill, who was starting the game, at least pitching an inning, um, only gets two outs, gets banged up a bit, five earned runs, three hits, two walks, zero strikeouts. So I'd, I'd imagine now that because of this result, we might see McGill get at least one more outing in AAA before being in the Mets bullpen by the weekend. That's okay. Again, I blame it on the hour delay, especially when you're the guy that's supposed to start the game, even if it's for an inning. Drew Smith comes in relief right after that being in Tyler McGill. And Drew Smith's first rehab start, outing, I should say, one aim pitch, one hit, zero earned runs, one walk, two strikeouts. That's awesome to see. Drew Flo will be returning the Mets during the later as well. Uh, Max Scherzer is expected to either throw a sim game or get the start for Syracuse tomorrow in AAA. So that's great to see Max through a little bit of a you know BP today. Was feeling really good. Was happy. To, even did a little selly on City Field at the field, I should say, pregame today. So that was great to see Max's game better. So is Starling Marte. We still may return the lineup today. I didn't even get a chance to talk about it. He was one of the only Mets hitters with a hit today. Jeb Big hits one, two for four. Because again, he's buying 400 over like his past 47 games. That is how good McHits has been. I'm pretty sure I have the stat here. Bear with me, guys. You see if I have it. Um, in his past 44 games now, guys, Jeb McNeil's batting right around 400. Yeah, he's very close to being a batting champ title for the first time this year. Um, outside of McNeil hitting and Alonzo with the bomb. The only other hit tonight was Elise Gourmet going one for three in the eight hole, starting at second base with McNeil in right field. That'll be the case until Marte comes back more than likely. Um, but just overall, a putrid outing from this Mets team today. There were literally no positives to take away. Very little little to none other than Jacob DeGrom. Not even having his best stuff, but still being a stud. Jeb might have been a star. Yeah, Jacob, you, you could have thrown it that way. Braves 3-1 over, over Giants. Again, I expect the Braves to win tonight. If they don't, I'll be genuinely surprised. Braves were losing uh, 3-0, entering the eighth yesterday. Made it a one-run ball game. Thankfully, the Giants just legged it out still, though. But, yeah, I, I expect the Braves to win tonight. The Mets will still be in first tomorrow, but they'll be up by half game, assumably. Um, Braves have yet to lose four straight games this year, and they may never. They literally may never with the rate that they've been on all year long. And again, guys, my final takeaways before I wrap up the show soon is one. Thank you all so much, everyone that's been chiming in. I greatly appreciate it. I apologize for the for me freezing. Again, I, 
this show is going just as good as the Mets offense once more. Continue smashing that like and subscribe on. Help us get to 100 couple likes at some point. means a lot. I'll be back live tomorrow more than likely, win or lose. Um, really hope it's a win or, or I'm going to start to lose my sanity. The, the thought of getting swept by the Cubs, even if Trevor Williams is pitching tomorrow, cannot be justified. Cannot be justified. Cannot be justified. Guys, this one hurt. This one really hurt. This this game is probably up there on like the games that have hurt me the most this year. And I hate and I hate that I'm saying that when we got 19 games left now in the season, 19, 20, whichever one it is, I think 19. Missy Marte big time as well. Yes. But here's the thing, and this is what I said entering this stretch without Marte. And here's where I'm gonna yell for one more time. So again, if you have headphones and take him out. Should have warned you guys earlier in the show too. I'm sorry. It does not matter if you have Marte or not. It should not matter if you have Marte or not when you're playing the Cubs, when you're playing the Marlins, when you're playing the Pirates. It shouldn't matter. It should not matter. We know how talented this team is. It should not matter that you don't have Marte. If this team was like last year, where you literally had no one offensively outside of Lindor is after the first couple months, Alonso doing what he normally does, no one else was consistent last year. If Marte was on the team last year, it would be more justified. This team is deep. It should not matter that you do not have Starling Marte right now. It shouldn't, and yet it does. And that's a problem. <sighs> Rebecca, it doesn't matter. It, do it shouldn't matter in the sense of the Mets still lugging out wins. Marte should not be the reason you winning or losing ball games against the Cubs, the Pirates, and Marlins. I will never believe that notion. Marte's an amazing player. I love him to death. I can't wait to have him back. He should not be the reason. He should not be a factor. He should not be an X factor to the way that it has been right now. Regardless of you shuffling the lineup. It shouldn't. We saw what the Mets did in Game 2 and Game 3 against the Marlins. It's not justified. Simply not. Won't allow it. There's plenty, there's plenty pain left in this season. Pat missed me with that bullshit. That's the last thing I want. That's the last thing that all Mets fans want. And again, guys, I hate ranting. I hate acting like this. I love you guys no matter what, though. My final takeaway, sorry, guys. This L is on me. Three runs is not acceptable. DeGrom, I love you so much for the dono. This loss is on anybody but Jacob DeGrom. I hope that you're that you're speaking jokingly because that's nonsense. Thank you so much for the dono, though. Yeah, the Mets the Mets score one run tonight, yet it's on Jake. Somehow, some way, there are some fans out there that feel that way. And for those fans, by all means, stop following the team because you have no goddamn clue what you're talking about at all. If you've been watching this team on a day-to-day -day basis, which I know a good portion of you guys in the live show and on replay have, then you know what the biggest issue for this team has been outside of inconsistent bullpen. And the bullpen's been fine for the most part, lately. It's this offense. It cannot be this Jekyll and Hyde. It cannot. Vogue needs to be better. Naquin. I want Naquin to start today, too. I don't, you know, shame. I'm sorry, but shame on Buck for favoring uh, Vogue over Naquin today. Vogue goes over three. Naquin had the best numbers of any Mets hitter entering tonight against Samson. Four for seven in his career with a home run. Yet we don't start the one guy that has hit Samson well in a small sample size. Why? Little things. Little, little things like that piss me off. Really do. And it's not the fact of, oh, Naquin, you want him right field. But you have Jeff and right. It doesn't matter. You put Naquin at DH for a day. And again, these are little things. I don't like to nitpick them that much. But they're just little things. When Vogie goes 0 for 3 today in the 5 spot, that's a problem. Nemo and Lador went 0 for today. Canna, Escobar, and and McCann. I'm not going to gripe much about the bomb, the order, because if it isn't for the bomb, this order, the bomb, the lap, the Mets don't even win like any of the five games that they've won so far. But the point I'm trying to make, um, the point I'm trying to make here is that when no one's hitting, bad things are naturally going to happen. 
Rebecca, yes, you're not the only one. That is correct. There are a lot, of, most, a good portion of fans in here have been following this team longer than me. I would be following them longer if I was allowed to be born more than 22 years. I just couldn't control it, unfortunately. Um, should, should have just start. Vientos will start tomorrow more than likely because they're facing a lefty. So that's be, destined to happen. Buck has been making questionable decisions lately. I agree. I agree. Just enough to bother me. Lindor has had a fair share of good games for the Mets to justify not going hard at him. A lot, I love Pete, but again, Pete, for what Pete's impact is on this Mets offense, for him to be consistently not performing the, enough, it's been an issue. And he's not the only one. The DH has been non-existent for a month. That's an issue as well. All these things are factors. But, yeah, guys... My stomach hurts. It really hurts. I would keep yelling, but I can't right now. I don't feel well. You know, you know, you know, things are not going good. When I, I'm, I literally have to end the show just because I don't feel well from getting so juiced up. I felt this way the entire game, the entire game after half hit that home run. It just did not feel good. And I'm always that Mets team to say, do I, I oh, of course this team hit a wall from a consistency level, but they've been this way. The Mets have been playing 500 ball for weeks now. Literally a month, the Mets have been playing 500 ball. That's not okay. Especially when you're playing 500 ball, less than 500 ball, five and six in your first 11 against the Cubs, Marlins, Pirates, Nationals. It's not good, guys. Hopefully, hopefully again, I love you all to death. I, I, I sincerely apologize once more to everybody. If I offended anybody, I really don't mean to. This was just a night where I had to let off some steam because this wasn't fun. I want a refund on Vogie. No, I love Vogie. He needs to get better, though. He's he's pressing so bad. His at-bats are looking, honestly, to the level of Darren Ruff with how inconsistent he's been right now. Um, but, guys, we'll be hopefully back live tomorrow. Love you guys. Have a good rest of your night. Hopefully the Mets win. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out, folks. <sighs> this team, man. This team.